Who's Sin Cara? Gary is, is asking it? questions already right at the very start of it. <laughs> Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to the podcast. Now, I think season 60, if you followed like me, Fresh or, or Amert on Twitter before, you've probably seen the name floating around. It did used to be a YouTube content series looking at basically helping new players to play in Rants. And we thought, you know what? It deserves a bit more than that. We can do a whole podcast out of this sort of stuff. So I thought, why not? Let's get three idiots together in a room and just start talking a bunch of crap about Siege. It's what we do best in DMs most of the time anyway. Super quick intro. If you haven't seen me before, I'm Des, one of the casters for Rainbow Six. I have a bit of a history in League of Legends and Overwatch and then jumped over to Siege where I think I met Fresh at my first ever LAN event for UK, I think. Was it for the UK LAN we met? Prem? Um, back when yeah, you were a fan, mate, before your whole tenure yeah. of becoming an analyst, this was a long that time was back. before becoming an analyst, yeah. Yeah, you got as well, you do your story. Yeah, um, I um, I wasn't really interested in becoming anything to do with Rainbow Six competitive side. Um, I was actually just bored at work one day and started predicting what Team Empire would obviously ban and then how they would play and that kind of stuff. Um, it basically started scaring off work. So then... <laughs> Got into it. Um, I'm guessing chance... you've just seen chat as well, Emma. I did, yeah. Well, Is that anger? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> it is. It is, Demo. <laughs> Love it. Um, so, yeah, ended up joining Team Sleepy, which was like a project team from Kickstar um, that Kickstar started. That kind of went to shit when a couple of players got perched by CL teams, disbanded. Um, Joined Horus with a matter. He kind of convinced me to join Horus after that kind of split when Cephas and PX and Western left and I left at the same time. Um, did some freelancing for some teams in kind of tier one and then somehow got a break and joined G2. Had a few months at G2 before getting kicked, and then joined Chaos, and then got relegated and retired, is basically my story. So, yeah. And so now she's an angry, balding coach sat in the corner, <laughs> yeah. who look, well, analysts who loves to sit there and talk a bunch of shit, and here we are. Yeah, Someone who's actually still in the game, bald, yeah. and is still, air quotes, relevant in this case, Omerta, go for it. I mean, I'm most relevant in the Sugar Fright event, <laughs> I think. That's where I've done most of my playing of the last year, I think. Uh, no, no. Uh, I am an assistant coach and analyst for Team Secret uh, in EU League. Before that, uh, obviously, he was with the boys when we were Orglis through our Challenger League run. And uh, before that, I was with uh, Fresh, as you said before, in Horace Esports as the head coach. There you go. That's us three. But of course, today we've also brought someone else along to come and join us because I know he has a story to tell. We all know that we want to hear what the hell happened to Rogan Stage 2. So without further ado, Leon, here's your two-second warning of camera coming up. We've also got Leon <laughs> with us as well. Welcome to the podcast, buddy. How's it going? Hi, uh, I'm doing very good, Des. For people who don't know me, I'm Leon Gitz, uh, captain of Rogue, previously on the old Team Secret roster, which disbanded, but uh, yeah, on our way to relegations right now. Yeah, they replaced you with a much better model, mate. Literally in your box on the podcast above you is Omerta just sat there still in a secret shirt. Yeah, Dude. I've got my one in, in my wardrobe from we're going to put it on. Like, same day. <laughs> Don't get on, mate. You won't. <laughs> Watching. Give, <laughs> give him 10 please. minutes. I'm pretty sure it can happen, I'm sure. Well, if Rogue sent me some jerseys, bro, I'll be wearing it. But, you know. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Maybe in future they'll send you some out. We'll see. I wanted yeah. to kick it off kind of like the whole reason why we got you on, right, was initially we were going to do the first episode of kind of introductions to us, the story of like Secret and Chaos, their journeys through stage one, stage two, the major, so on and so forth. But then we thought, naturally, it's a really good chance to talk to you because there's a very interesting story going on behind Rogue right now where stage one, you were the most dominant team. You were the first one to give BDS their first defeat. Um, quite admirably as well with a really good performance on Oregon. Came to the major, you shit the bed then. Came to stage two, shit the bed some more, and now you're in relegations. <laughs> I don't think it's the story anyone expected to see you boys go on, but the best place to hear the story from is none other than the captain. So all yours, mate. Floor is yours. Tell us just what the bloody hell happened coming into stage two, and if not the major, if that's where the problems really started. Uh, I'll start with the major, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't say like there was massive issues uh, coming up to the major. I'd say it was just a like, massive burnout. Like between me joining, uh, me and Carl joining like Mayish unofficially to uh, August. Like we were pretty much double screaming every day. Uh, it's like with one day off on top of you know two EUL games and a GSA game and I think overall just like and then we decided to not have a break um after EUL finished to like prep for the major which I think is where we fucked up and you know we just at the end of the day just just got really burnt out and tired of Siege and that really fucked us for the major because we just <laughs> brought nothing new we just played really bad and there's nothing else to it really hmm 
And so it's one interesting side of this to me is like looking at it that you've got two guys here from other teams that were part of EU well as well. Like when you say burnout as well, the amount of games that you guys have got to play. Now, fresh and I know you and guys, you and us and I spoke about this quite a few times now. We said, you know, there is a lot of siege for teams to play when you wrap in the two games a week. Wednesday, a little bit harder to prep for than the Monday. You've also got the national leagues on the go. Do you guys have any burnout on your side as well? Or was it more just a rogue thing, do you think? I think every team finds it hard, honestly. Uh, you have basically a week to prep for the first game. And then you have like a day to prep for the next game. Like it's always going to be tough in that situation. You end up having to kind of prep for the Monday game and the Wednesday game at the same time, which is kind of confusing for players. You don't really have any proper time off. Maybe you have like one one time, like one day a week or something off. Uh, it's pretty tough. Also, when you add in the National League as well, like obviously us and Rogue are both in GSA, a lot of strong teams in that league. So you can't just like turn up and play it essentially. So yeah, it's just a lot of work. And it's easy to get burnt out when you have that much work. Mm. Same story on your side, Fresh. I mean, Nordics were a different story for you guys, weren't they? It wasn't running <laughs> concurrently alongside every yeah. single week. It, it was during stage one, if I remember correctly. Mm. Um, there were more of a hindrance, to be honest, because, you know, we didn't do any prep for Nordic. We didn't care about map bans, operator bans, counter strategy, none of that. But it was a day that we lost. Like, I know a lot of teams kind of scrimmed during their national days, um, but we didn't choose to do that either. So we basically lost a day a week just for playing a competition that we didn't you know the, there's not i think we can kind of go over this a lot but there's not really any point in having the pro teams in national competitions mm. and we kind of felt the same is that we we were losing a day because of that um so during stage one it was only prize money of... you weren't doing it fresh Sorry? With chaos only prize money you weren't with, with chaos. Uh, fresh, right no now. we got some in stage two you know because oh, um, right. i, I did right then change. <laughs> Because <laughs> we got eighth in stage two, so we got some prize money. Um, but yeah, it, it was more of a hindrance. And then you throw in that you've got nine fixtures within 28 days. Um, and, you know, like like Leon said, if, if Rug didn't take a break and they just worked through to the major, burnout's kind of a very real thing. Mm. I mean, talking around you guys finishing eighth and getting some prize money, let's go back to the team that finished 10th here as well and talk about Rogue a bit. So for Leon... <laughs> You guys were in a spot where you said burnout in the major was a big problem, but then you come into stage two and, you know, the last three last, the last three games, was it? You guys made the change and chose to bring uh, Osti back in in place of Karl Shecker to say maybe we can yeah, save this a little bit. Games. Didn't really happen, did it? Like, what happened <laughs> well, in those first seven games that really led to that being the breaking point of we need to make a change to our core roster here? And I'm very aware that you guys had the whole Osti in for five games and Aces came back in. Talk to us a little bit around the, the impact of that on the team as well. Well, on the... Oh, I, can't remember, I can't remember we found out. I think it was like the 28th of August. We found out like uh, we got like DMs like, like from like rogue management fly, like frustrating in. And then all of a sudden it's like all these emails coming through like Aces and uh, Corey getting like banned. And like, you know, everyone's like kind of panicking on that side. And, you know, we're all still having our break after the, the major. So everyone's kind of like, like kind of shocked. But they like, at the same time, you know, we f didn't really talk about it that much. And then when we came back to, um, to start practicing again, we were sitting there, for, like, we had to sit there, I can't remember how long, we were just sitting there, like, talking over, like, what the fuck we have to do now, because, for what we knew, uh, we assumed Aces would get banned for, like, at least three months. So, in our minds, we had to grab a player that could play the whole stage, and, you know, potentially, like, further, depending on how much we did. Um, so we started prepping with Hosty, because he, he seemed like the best option, really. I think most people would agree with that. Um, where to go from there, really? Uh, we just, what, about the, know, what about the role change at the time as well? Because I imagine being in a player being like that, you've got to account for play style, what role they're comfortable on, what operators they like playing. That can really jumble a team up, right? Uh, yeah, so when Hosty joined, he took like my roles and I took Ace's roles because I'd say like overall, like Hosty was more of like a fragger than me. You know, I just play brain dead. Like, <laughs> there's a big difference. Hey, we can see we, we can see that by your entry stats, mate. Don't you worry, <laughs> yeah. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I decided I'd take Ace's roles instead because it'd make most sense. Like you know, just like Thatcher and and it whatever. And then Hosty would take my roles, which is more like Jaeger, Sophia, which he's been playing already on the Myers. Mm. Uh, so he's quite comfortable with that stuff. It's just lack of experience. So we brought him in. Uh, we started practicing for, what was the time, like three weeks um, until EUL started. Uh, getting ready. And then um, two days before EUL, 
we find out our three month ban has gone down to a free play day ban. Um, but the free play day ban doesn't start at the start of the season, it starts uh, two games into the season. So we just said, fuck it, we might as well just keep playing with Hossi because, you know, we've spent three weeks with him already. Aces hasn't touched the game, he's moved house uh, in, in that time and all that shit. So we were just like, you know what, we'll just keep playing with Hossi, um, work it through till, you know, play day five. We should be okay, we'll get a couple wins, maybe a draw, whatever. But, um, yeah, <laughs> it did not go really how we uh, planned it to. Uh, mm. We lost, like, the first, like, well, obviously all games, but, you know, we lost, like, a few games uh, with Hosty, um, and we started, like, panicking. One was, like, what the fuck do we do? Sh uh, things aren't the same. Uh, we need to change stuff. So, like, we knew Kazeku could call, but, like, it's not really his strong point. Um, so we tried to switch him and Rips around, try to give uh, Karzeka the more support role so he could sit back a bit and cool with me whilst Rips takes like a little bit more aggressive roles, you know, just trying to like, you know, fill in the spots in the game. Uh, and that just didn't work out for us either. <laughs> um, it, it just, you know, it wasn't a play style that he could fit. It wasn't a play style that Rips, it, he can fit it, but, you know, he's not used to it. Um, which in favor like stopped Kazeka really focusing on himself, which focused more on the team. And that's where like his whole um like no slump, you could say, um, really started because his stats for the first like the majority of the season weren't too great, admittedly. Um so we decided like once Ace was back, we're gonna keep trying with like the full roster. Just to see how things go, but obviously everyone's already got in their mind. Uh, like we're <laughs> uh, we're losers, you know. Like mm -hmm. we don't uh after a few wins, everyone's mentality was broken. Like, we lose, like, one round, and everyone was gone for the rest of the game. Fair enough. Um, yeah, and then uh, they come to the point where we're like, okay, we have to win one of the last two games, um, but we haven't got the gun power, because, you know, Kazeka's, like, not really freaking out. Everyone's, like, doing... Every, as a whole, everyone's not doing as well as they did last season. So we decided we'd try to bring Hossi in... Um, just to see if he would be able to bring some gun skill and some firepower that we needed to get those last two wins, which nearly worked, but uh, wasn't enough. Oh, Lonnie's jumped in just to hear you go at the end of saying, oh, yeah, everything went really shit for us towards the end of there. Hi, Lonnie. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think everyone kind of watched this kind of like car crash just building up in front of their eyes, right, where it's like you could see the kind of, not so much panic, but the desperation really settling towards the end of, you know, what can we do to get three points to avoid relegation here? And we all saw how the last day ended out. Yeah. I think one thing that I've always been quite hot on, whenever I've seen someone say something like, oh, Hosty, what a shit choice. Why don't they just keep it as it was? Like, why would you drop Karjeka, right? Like, you could probably say a few words to this. It's, no strong, it's the strongest when it comes from players who are on the team themselves. Hosty is absolutely not a bad player. It was more of a bad situation that he was put into. And, you know, a decent player has become kind of the one who takes all the heat for it in a way. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, in, in my opinion, like, it's very difficult to go from tier three and then just play in tier one. Like, that level of experience you just don't have it and like i know from from like when we were playing against rogue well we knew we were playing as hostile and we knew that we could just bully him really because like as soon as he has a few bad rounds he's just gonna lose his head completely you know and like we were kind of fortunate in the way that we managed to do that like and that was just from our game you know like and for the other teams who are like once again more developed than us more confident than us then uh they could really take advantage of that like that last game for you guys against uh navi like that was like uh, that was a game that was always going to be tough for you guys to win, I think. Yeah, that last game, I think once like it got to match point, we, <laughs> I think we all just gave up. We were just like, oh, what's the point? Might as well just play most of it for fun. Um, yeah, uh, like Hosty himself is a really good player. Like He has a lot of knowledge and he brought a lot of things that most of us didn't really think about. But at the end of the day, like Amoto has been saying, like he's, you know, he came from Demise and Yukin to, you know, a m less than a month later, he's playing in EUL. Um, yeah, and he just didn't have the right amount of experience and uh, mm. in like everything really to really push himself to where he could be if uh, he had more time. Did you consider um, anybody else then in terms of picking a different person up other than Hosty, or was was it just a natural choice to pick up Hosty? We did. We did have, we were thinking about multiple people, I can't remember who exactly, um, but we just, yeah, we didn't really want to waste time trialing people. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of time between the ban and the EUL Stein for us to really make that type of choice. Uh, we just saw, like, you know, Hossie's doing well uh, in, like, the roles we need him to play, so we'll just fill him in there. 
Mm. I got a question for all three of you on this one actually, because someone did raise it in chat, and I think I know immediately what the what the private response will probably be, especially from Fresh and Emma on this front. But Joe did a jump in his very similar way from T3 to T1. Add a good I mean, first you can game and then around in ranked and win games and monkey around in tier one and win games. Like that's the answer. <laughs> Like, yeah, pretty like, much. Joe's a great player, but like he has the freedom in his team to do this. Like the team really play for that. He integrates really great with what they're doing. They already have a player, Doki, who is basically doing the same thing, having two of them together. They play great together. So many rounds. They won a round against us because they just pushed down long for lit. Like it was a stupid play, but it won them the round. And they did the, the, the same thing in split one and in split two against us. So it's like, um, like jo Joe's a different case to Hosty. Hosty's like a sensible player who just has like really good mechanics. He's got really good like reading of the game. He's really great at like pre-firing and like understanding where players are going to rotate to. Joe just does the stuff that nobody would ever do, but it always works. Like he's just really yeah. good at this kind of play. I think, think so. different players. I think if if you um you know I, I spoke to Doki about this when they when they made those um changes. They knew at the time that it was a gamble taking, you know, taking players from tier three and put them in a tier one team but they kind of believed that the raw talent was there and they just had to kind of mold them um and you know after they drew they drew their first two games if i remember rightly they drew to temper and then they drew against us um mm. they they did very well to kind of come back from that because like they you know they they could have really struggled after that you know with the kind of tier three players and that that kind of stuff um but I think I think it's the same. I think it just it is a gamble when you take a play from from tier three. Um, but mm. it seems to have paid off for them, I guess. Yeah. Bear in mind as well, he's had a lot more time with that roster compared to what Hossi had. Yeah. Like, uh, not only uh, is Joe English, so it's a lot easier for him to understand everyone else. Like Hossi, like uh, you know, he's <laughs> we had to sit there with him while he was doing his contract because he didn't understand half of it. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, never yeah, really gonna um, help too much. Never gonna help too much. Yeah. Uh, I know that we've got, we've got loads we want to talk about. I don't want it to be too much into the major, but as a kind of last point or le final conversation point around this, leading into the future, like you guys have obviously got relegations coming up, right? I guess two mm -hmm. questions on that front. Who would you rather play against out of the two teams that you could face coming up against Eminem or Kavana? And second, as a quick question, this is one you might not answer right now. Are you going to be bringing Karjeka back for that or is Hosty hanging around or what's the plan for the roster by then? Well, first of all, like, I don't really care what team we play. Like, either one we're going to beat. Uh, I feel like we're confident enough to be able to beat both of those teams on our good day, uh, even on a bad day. Uh, just, you know, go get in the practice in the hours. Uh, and then secondly, Karzeka is back. Um, we only brought in Hossi for those two games. Like, as soon as we did that, like, I was talking to Karzeka behind the scenes, making sure he was okay, like, get, like uh, helping him understand what was going wrong with him, and he understood it as well. Um, so since between, like, those games and coming back, he, had, like, he, you know, he, re he changed himself and... He's really uh, brought himself back up to glory, I'd say. So good, far. good. Awesome. You've, had a, you've had a decent amount of time now, right? Since EU League finishing, and you've yeah. got two or three weeks now until the final, or until yeah. the relegation match. Things have been, you know, we're taking it slow, but uh, we're making sure we're doing it right, because we don't want to rush it and then fuck something up halfway through and completely have to rechange everything. So mm. we're just taking, making sure we're doing things right before we go into, like, the relegation match. Especially you don't want to mess it up against a team that no doubt is riding a high of like, oh my god, we could be about to make our careers here by getting into EUL and they're going to come out all guns blazing on that final day, right? Yeah, exactly, because for us, we've, I don't think we've won a game or like, we've not really won anything like majorly since the major or even like the last day of EUL, like because we lost against Vitelli. Um, so, you know, we're just trying to make sure we're building up our confidence again in scrims and mm. making sure everyone's ready for it. Question of like, what does winning feel like at this point for you boys? I imagine <laughs> it's the taste that's been gone for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, even winning in scrims is hype now. Like, I think everyone like, <laughs> I think people are like just sick of losing. So like, when scrims go well, everyone's like a lot, a lot better. Fair enough. Fair enough. Right, well, just that. I appreciate you kind of going through all that in quite a bit of detail as well. And uh, Amir, I know you want to talk a little bit around the new patch. So I know you've been quite. We've been quite opinionated on this at points. So I imagine all of us have got our opinions on what we think of this one yeah. as well. We had to ask you before the broadcast, Leon, as well, you know, have you played it yet? And you were like, not really, no, I'm focusing on relegations. But I've got no doubt yeah. you've got one eye on the future as well and looking at what that looks like. So, Amir, if you've got a few questions, then far away. Okay, so, I mean, everyone, I guess, now is familiar with the things that are kind of uh, coming in the new patch. Like, the most controversial change, I guess, is the Jaeger rework. I mean, how do you feel about this Jaeger rework, Leon? 
think it's what the game needed. Uh, Go on, Steph. Fight. Argue with him. I'm ready to see this because Steph, Steph has said to me in private, and you don't mind me saying this, he thinks it is the most bollocks thing going. (laughs) Yeah, it really is. Like, okay, so is that like, in my opinion, the the problem is the fact that you just have like so much utility. You have so many like weird, dumb, bulletproof gadgets, and like Jaeger has always kind of been fine, in my opinion. Like, he's never really been a problem. And like, when we like, because we've we've played like a load of scrims like with these things now with like the new patch and like. I mean, nades are just insane, right? Like, mm-hmm. you don't need to take gunfights with anyone. You can just nade people now. It takes, like, everyone's got so good now at, like, clearing utility because they've had to for the last, like, six months <laughs> that it's, like, nothing to just throw free flashbangs and then just kill whoever's playing behind a shield or whatever. And yeah, it definitely. just, in my opinion, there's just so many, like, nades and stuff, like, floating around now that, like, it's so hard to, to play. We did have a, a game we played where we had both Wamai and Jaeger available. And it actually was kind of nice because the the way the regen works, it was really tough for them to like clear all ADSs and Nate. There was like, there's a, a window of opportunity which you can do it, which is like better than it was before. But ultimately, if you uh, kind of cock up that window of opportunity, then you have more utility than you had before in the first place. So yeah, like that was kind of good. But I, I agree with you. Like Jaeger is like, there's not an issue in this uh, situation. I do feel like there's way too much shit that we need to remove as like, as a whole um but at this point i feel like it's just a thing Ubisoft doesn't want to address well not address but like not want to change i feel like that's how they want like certain operators to play or house op- operators to be so the easiest way for them i guess to do it is just to make sure um, the amount of projectiles you have to throw is reduced but it stops that mm. yeah yeah that's a fair point i mean i kind of i do kind of like the Jaeger change a little bit now having played more of it I feel like it does allow you to bring more variety in your lineup. Yeah. But like, what do you think the meta will kind of be now? Like now you can't just play four shields and sit people behind shields all game. Like now, what do you do on defense? I think there'll be like like two key positions you'll have, like you like with like shields or whatever, with like a few ADSs, and if you've got one my up, then bring one my. But I think there's gonna be a, there's gonna have to be a lot more like roaming and like team play on the room to actually make sure you put an impact into the round instead of just sitting behind a shield. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be good for like viewership and good just in general. It reminded me a little bit of like how the game was when it launched. There's yeah, more like team synergy now. You have to do more stuff together. It's less about clearing utility. But the problem is, is that like you have more hard breaches and stuff now, right? And you can just open yeah. everything. So like, if you think back to like the beginning of the game, like in year one, how like key it was that you had like Thatcher and your hard breacher. Like, m- m- I mean, pre Hibana, it was just Fermite, right? But yeah. now, now we're in a world where there's like so many hard breaches. Like defenders can't sit anywhere. Like you have to roam. Like you have to yeah. like monkey about a bit. Really, I think that's probably the only way you can really defend properly now. Mm. I'd I'd say like yeah, like like I said, like you have like two good spots on site now that you have to use, and then you have to use the other three players or whatever. Like how many players you have left to actually go around and actually make those plays? Because otherwise, you're not just going to win the round. And I feel like that's kind of a good thing because it yeah. forces like team play. It forces communication. Um, and it shows the teams that will, you know, have better synergy and better gun skill who actually wins, like, you know, the rounds. Yeah, that's fair play. Yeah. Des, what do you think from your silver free rank perspective, mate? (laughs) (laughs) It's gone through at this point, mate. It will be silver in no time for keep on playing, though. Jesus Christ. Now, I think... I don't really want to throw any solid thoughts on it, because one, I haven't played it, and two, I don't look at the game likely in the same way that guys like you three do. But what I do like the most, and the one thing I do want to give a nod to, as I did so on Twitter, to be fair, is that I think the fact that Ubisoft have actively sat there now, whether or not they did in the past or not, is kind of irrelevant now. The fact they are sitting there and saying, yeah, okay, we can see this is a problem, we can see this needs to be addressed, to me, just shows a lot of promise. I think after a year or so, people going, look, they don't listen to the game, the game's dying, they don't know where they want to take it, yada, yada, yada. To actually see some understanding of okay look we've been told this and even though they know the casual kickback is going to be there the fact they've made the changes they have i think is a really positive thing and hopefully in the next few months if there is turns out to be another problem or they've gone too far they pull it back a bit and it sits more towards the middle i really i'm actually really keen to know what you think fresh because you're now and when you first (laughs) retired right you really kind of simmered down the strength of your opinions i think you're like i don't know i ain't involved anymore it is what it is whatever like you know what's your take on it as someone who was at that level and looking at it and someone who's now kind of sat on, dare I say, my side of the fence and looking at it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think... I think on the balance, um, all of the balancing changes that they kind of announced last week are good. Um, 
I, I, I remember your molding thread actually. I remember yeah, it when you saw it all coming I, out. <laughs> yeah, still, I still have concerns about Aruni. Um, but you know, the, from a clump point of view, that's not going to be an issue for three months. Mm. Um, I, I don't wow. like the idea behind the operator, but that's kind of a separate thing. The Jaeger changes the shield. You know, I've not played them yet, but they were very good, and they are. They are listening in a way. Um, they can kind of only complement that. But yeah, I think from my point of view, I've obviously not seen scrims like you know Matt has. I've not. I've not even played the kind of CTS yet. Um, but it seems positive. It feels like I think a lot of a lot of people fought for the past probably eighteen months, year at least. The the games kind of been going backwards, especially from the competitive kind of side of it. And I think everyone, or my perception is that. Everyone feels like the the wheels have started moving forwards, and we've taken a step forward. So it's whether we can kind of continue with that, basically. Fair play. But yeah, I'm I'm not molding. Um, Once in your life, <laughs> you're not, I, I you might not, you're not, might not be molding, mate, mate. But you're definitely balding. Look at you. I see you see fucking low hanging fruit in my sure. life this new season. Like I'm yeah, so, yeah. I think everyone's so. Fucking was that was that bored. was that was that fresh air or fresh hair? I missed that one. Sorry. <laughs> fresh air. Carry on. Oh, <laughs> I think um, I, I think that you're right. I think it is like definitely like new fresh content. Uh, what do you think of Aruni, uh, Leon? What do you think of her? Uh, I I still don't really like. I don't like how it's indestructible. Still, um, I think that's like the worst part about it. But I feel like. The like the cooldown time, which is like thirty seconds, is like it's kind of okay, I guess. Um, thinking about it, when you actually like when you actually go into game, it might be okay because it, yeah, I think thirty seconds is a lot of time in siege, especially uh, in competitive. Yeah, but but um, yeah, it's still like an extra thing you have to clear out now. But like imagine theme goes. park, like theme park, it takes you like forty five seconds just to get to the building and then yeah. like 30 seconds to get through the door get through the door and there's just like these fucking prison gates everywhere <laughs> yeah. I feel like I mean, you're carrying out like a high security happened. bank robbery don't you or something <laughs> like cafe just having to flash a hatch just to be able to drop into top red is yeah it's no I mate just... just play thinker run in there thinker you won't <laughs> that's the new meta uh, six six frags thinker Easy. i mean I was I was kind of molding about Aruni beforehand because you know I I was lucky I got the opportunity to play test and do the pro workshop that kind of included Aruni, and she was a lot stronger when I kind of played her. So when she was announced, I didn't realize that she had these kind of longer cooldowns and she only you know yeah. she had free and etc. But I I think they should still be destructible, and then you give the attackers a choice of disabling them with a flashbang or blowing them up. And I think that's that would be quite a nice balance. Um, yeah. Because as an attacking team, you can consciously make a choice. You're not being forced to waste utility where you don't need to, for example. I think yeah. it adds some some like variance to the to the game. And I think this should be used in a similar way to like kind of how Goyo has been used recently. Other operators like Castle. I think there's definitely like an argument for like playing her and Castle together in some situations on some sites. That might be quite quite cool, quite interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, for me, she's just she's just strong. She just kind of is the definition of power creep, right? Right? Like she does everything. Like she basically yeah, she makes all rotates. She can like make all lines of sight. She has like arguably two great guns. Then just has like key utility that you want. So hmm. I don't know. I think yeah. I think that she'll be strong. We might not see her on every site on every map, but there's definitely some maps where like I definitely could see her maybe even being banned. To be honest, like, Cafe is um, a good example. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I think people underestimate and like I don't know how this all can play out, um, but I think people underestimate the the intel that you actually get from her. So like an example of this would be like on on Clubhouse on the CCTV breach. Because even if you do get rid of them gates, um, it's very likely that a defender can reactivate them. So you've then got to burn some utility when you want to push through, if you're going to push through from the breach. Um, so depending where you can place those gates, they can obviously do damage, they burn utility, and there's an intel aspect of them as well. Um, which kind of, that's why she doesn't sit too well with me as an overall operator, but I guess we'll see how it plays out, and there's three months before 
she hits competitive anyway so mm. we, we could have a real deep conversation we are planning on doing like siege in 60 kind of workshops where we'll sit and look at ideas for new operators things like that just kind of have a, an idea ideation session with chat essentially but just to expand on that point you mentioned earlier on around you should have the choice of destroying it or uh disabling it how would you see it? Just as a quick question, how would you see that working? Because in my mind, to first destroy it, you'd need to disable the laser in the first place, right? Um. Yeah. 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 And then oh, that you're using double the amount of utility right? for it, like I don't know. I, I, I kind of want to like interrupt a little bit. Sorry, but like <laughs> I've just seen that Alan posted in the chat, and he says, "What happens if you need to push for a door at the end of the round? You're on low HP and you have no flashes. Do you just lose?" <laughs> yeah. And this is like literally what happens. We, right? like, we have this scenario in the playtest. You <laughs> literally cannot win. Like sometimes, it's like Legion. Old like Legion. It, yeah, like it really does not matter. Like you can have the best strategy. You can have like, the, uh, but some guy gets spawn peaked, and then you just don't have free flashbangs, and like the end of the round comes and you're just stuck and one of the key arguments i think for like changing the meta in general was that before you had these situations where you had like some guy sat in a corner in the site behind a shield you had no utility to clear it so you know you just couldn't do anything and now we've moved away from this and like mm. made jaeger like kind of shit basically <laughs> like one of the key like linchpin operators that's been around for the whole game that was like completely fine like literally was fine and now they're like oh get a rooney in Oh, but what happens at the end of the round when we can't walk through the gates? Yeah, we, oh, oh we man. Have, then, I guess. In the in the playtest, Hyperuna had like <laughs> 30 HP or 20 HP, and he was in a 1v1. And in the playtest, there was four gates. Um, I think there's three now. And he just couldn't actually enter the bomb site because he would have died. He didn't have any drones. He didn't have any utility. So he just had to sit outside of the site and just be like, well, I'm fucked. You know what? Um, you pair you are going to love this because these are the kind of arguments that we have all the time. Literally, we, me, Omerta, and Fresh argue a lot in DMs around this kind of <laughs> stuff. And my stance on this is actually another one that I'm taking back from the days of League of Legends. Because for those that know League of Legends, you have oh, three yeah, inhibitors in your base. And shoot alike. Yeah. It's still a competitive <laughs> esport, mate. But it's game design, the game design applies across all of them, right? But in League of Legends, you have three inhibitors, which when they're destroyed in your base, you get much stronger like neutral minions pushing towards your base. And I always used to argue, like, when I first got into the game, oh, it's bullshit, where if, like, if you start winning fights when you've got two inhibitors down, you can't come back into the game. It's a load of bollocks. And people were like, yeah, but your punishment for not playing the early game properly or the early round in Siege's case is that you don't get to win the end of the round, which I thought was kind of bullshit, but understand it, where it's like, are you going to say to someone because they've got to a spot where it's one man left, they have no utility left, and they have 20 HP left, that they deserve to still go on to win the round regardless of what's in their way? If that's what no, you want I... to see in a pure FPS game, yes. But I think in a game like Siege, no would probably be the answer. I think yeah. you should still have the opportunity to. Nah, I want people who can actually like shoot. Um, yeah, like, like the shoot whole game the other person shoot and win the win the round. Like, I don't want it. I don't want it to become a game where you literally can just place your stuff down at the beginning of the round, and then you can just AFK, go put the kettle on, come back, move around a little bit, so you don't get kicked, and then just win. Like, because that is literally <laughs> what defense is. Like, there's one thing. Like, one thing like that I can say from coming from tier three into tier one is that. In like the big difference was like winning attacks because everyone can win defenses. Like literally, defenses. You, there's some maps where you can just AFK. Like you don't. The, the worst thing you can do is actually play the game. You just sit in a corner. Like you've got four shields. You've got all these walls reinforced. Mutes everywhere. They can't open anything. Fat just ban. You got all your ADS. There's all your mice. And the only way you lose a round is if you actually move and try to shoot someone. If you just stay still and do nothing, you win. Like that's the complete opposite of what Seed should be. That's so far from that. Like, think about the old Rainbow Six games. Like, the old Rainbow Six games was all about, like, playing together as a team, like, uh, coordinating pushes and coordinating utility and, like, clearing. And it was focused on killing, right? Mm. Like, this new, like, your whole argument basically is just, I don't know, like, uh, one of see these this... things where... The thing, the thing that gets my opinion of Des, like what Des just said is that you can play the game right still for the first, like, two and a half minutes. You can waste three, three charges on three Aroonies. Oh, wait, they get popped. <laughs> oh wait, they get popped again. <laughs> they get popped again, so that's another free you have to throw. And then you also have to get rid of like three ADSs, which recharge, by the way, every 10 seconds, and you've got four one Myers that you've got to get rid of. So think about having to remove all that utility first and then using your other impacts and stuff, you have to get rid of like shields or whatever. And then mm -hmm. you go to push and all the defender has to do is shoot shoot a little uh, you know, little thing above the door yeah. after you've wasted the first 30 seconds destroying everything in the site to yeah. then push it and go in and like win.
Can um, me... out of interest, I, I don't know. This is more of a general question. Can Maestro cams reactivate it? Uh, I believe I, they can. I, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'll have to try yeah. it. I, don't know. I, I mm. thought they could. Um, oh, but, but the real yeah. question is for the Siege Balance team, because they definitely thought this one, is can Mozzie <laughs> hack they a Twitch can. drone oh and can God. Twitch's Mozzie drone hacked thing reactivate it like? Because that's going to happen every game. Like They can't. I can't. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You try it. Apparently, apparently Master Kems can reactivate it. Yeah, that's, well, even, exactly. that's even worse. <laughs> but depending on where you place your maestros as well, it's not even like you can, you know, you could even get to a, uh, I don't know. But it's, the one, the one thing I'll so say much. in the comments that I made earlier, right, and people might sit there and go, okay, well, actually, it's a 50-50 game where you play attack and defense, right? All the challenges I'm on about there, punishment for not doing things right early in the round only applies to attackers. And that's where my gripe sits with the game, I think. It is very, very hard to fuck up as a defender in this game, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Leon's entry stats are different. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, if you're running around the map trying to be Mr. Impact, mate, and going like, what was it, 0 and 18 across a few maps to summit daft? Then yeah, that fair enough. against us, <laughs> by the looks of it. I remember, t I remember DMing you after your game on Cafe. Actually, was it against G two or something? Or was it BDS? I yeah. can't remember. G2. Where you were like, you were like zero and five, and you were just like, yeah. But the thing is, no one actually saw what happened in those entry fights, and I was like, all right, mate, bit touchy about it, are we? No, well, I mean, if I could, if I had the clip, if I clipped it, I, I could show you like I got fucked. But then again, I kind of put myself in that situation, right? I don't know. Uh, there you go. Positive no, growth, is, though, mate. Positive growth. To, that comes back to decision making, right? Like, it was your decision to, like, take the gunfights mostly, right? Which is, yeah. like, a key aspect. But, like, like what Des is saying, like, on attack, late in the round, like, if you can't do anything because the defenders have put utility down, then, like, you're limited, right? You can't make any choices. Your choice is to what? Just lose the game? Just, yeah. Just embrace you, 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 the Your shield. choices have to be very decisive very early in the round or you do get punished later on. I, I don't mind yeah. the whole, like... Not every round should be recoverable. If you fuck the early round so much that it's like completely gone beyond repair, fine. If you lose two members to something stupid, fine. Maybe you do deserve to lose it, right? I get both sides. I understand like everyone wants to be able to have agency, but I think the case you're thinking of there, like a 1v1 clutch or whatever, or even like a 1 versus 2 when you're low HP and there's an Aruni in your way. I don't think we're going to see that as often as people think we might. I don't know, I think, but you would definitely see an Aruni common. with uh, a Malusi thing fucking behind it, with a Maestro camera behind that, and well, my charge, because that is what you're going to see. Like, is it any different than what it was before? What we've <laughs> I'd, I'd wager them whether the Aruni's yeah, there yeah, or not, you're probably fucked, though. I feel like Zero would be perfect for it, but they've they've took his needs away, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, he was the perfect op to stop this shit. You know, you shoot a fucking device through the door, that goes away, you throw a couple flashes, he needs everything, <laughs> but no, now he's removed his needs, it's, you know, it's another op but, no one's going to use anymore because he's got no needs. needs. needs, come on. Yeah. No one Doki needs is good for us, but I mean... <laughs> <That's>, yeah, <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, it's just one of these one of these strange decisions, I guess, but ultimately they have a bigger picture for how they want to do mm. things in the game, and it's 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 like it's as much as like we want to moan about it, it's it's up to us to kind of uh, reach the challenge, I guess, and uh, come up with new strategies and come up with new ways of dealing with stuff. However, the problem is, is that like as soon as someone works out the most broken thing you can do, that's all anyone will do on every map. Like it doesn't really matter. Like you want to have like fifty viable operators, hundred viable operators, but if like mm. even one of them is like slightly better than all the rest, then you'll just play it every time, like yep. or it'll be banned every time. It's just the mm. way the game is. And that's not yep. anything, is right? <laughs> no yeah. one's going to play a competitive yeah. game without I mean, using the, issue, the most though. broken shit. Yeah, of course. I think one big issue is that they tried to make every op viable. And it yeah. uh, overall like makes it a lot worse because you've got like Malusi, who has three charges still. Lost like a T5 well. for an MP5. But yeah, which was basically a buff. And uh, you know, there's still been minimal change for her since she's been released. I don't know what you mean, mate. She's just got three bar wires. <laughs> more like, <laughs> so it's more like nine. Like it's like three yeah, bar true. wires on one. You know what, you know what I love fresh? I was literally watching for the exact moment when finally we'd see Steph really kind of snap out of his shell and just go in on something. It took 31 minutes from the start of the podcast. <laughs> ah, what can I say? <laughs> timed it down to the nth with. degree on that front. I absolutely timed it down. Uh, anything <laughs> else you want to talk about with the new patch promoter? Yeah, one last thing. Uh, what do you think of the new Tuchanka rework? I mean, you know, if it gets sales for the rug bu bundle, then... <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, don't know. I, feel like, I think i think um it kind of it kind of helped that it's it's just it's added shit on top of the current shit that makes it worse overall i think individually he'll be okay um but you know add it on top of a smoke or like a malusi and you know stuff like that it makes it a lot worse yeah 
No, I'd agree with you. I think that like the, the problem that they're having a little bit within the game right now is that you have a lot of operators that kind of like fall into the same categories. You have like operators like Castle and Aruni who both kind of fall into this like architect category that they always talk about in balancing. And then you have like Smoke and Kankanao who kind of comes into utility denial. And then obviously you have operators like Goyo, which kind of still could count and goes yeah. quite nicely with the new Tachanka rework. Then you end up in situations where like the best strategy isn't like using a variety of things. It's just tripling down, quadrupling down on one thing. Like, yeah. It's like, oh, we want information. Cool. Bring 50 fucking cameras, boys. Like, oh, yeah. we want like utility to clear. Like, you will literally play like dumb shit, like Frost, just because she has a shield. Like, you and know, like, it's now. so stupid. And a shotgun. <laughs> and a shotgun. Yeah. 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 And that, um, yeah. that's the thing with the, the kind of balancing as well. I mm. think my my perception of it when Wamai was brought out was that they thought people would play Jaeger or Wamai. They didn't think people would play both, and they didn't kind of consider the balancing around people playing both. Uh, my worry with Tachanka, because I think I think on his hurt on his own is not too bad, but then add him with a smoke. Yep, Anima Lucy. Can, anima, yeah, and it's the compounding effect that I don't think they necessarily taking into account fully. Um, and you know these scenarios that, that do occur in the game like if you're trying to get a punt down and there's a chunker and a smoke left good luck yeah it goes from uh like 30 seconds of denial to a minute and a half of denial which is massive for yeah. a game like siege especially when some of the maps like i said about theme park earlier on like you can't even get into the doors of the map in the first 45 seconds of the round, you know? Yep. Like, because yeah. they don't want you to get spawn peaked by the 150 windows, they put, like, an entire fucking theme park in front of the door of the, like, how you get in, you know? You've got to sit around fucking Disney before you get first, in, right? you know? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I don't know, like, there's some, there's some maps specifically where I feel like that's the biggest problem. Like, there's so much shit you have to do. Like, you have to navigate through so much crap to, like, even get to the site or get yeah. to the... Just and then you've got building. maps like Coastline, where, where the whole bomb site <laughs> is on the edge of the map. Like, yeah, literally. straight access. Just sit on the yeah. reef. But Someone actually asked a question it. around you that, which we'll come around to in the Q and A towards the end. To be fair, they asked around again the most competitive map pool. We'll talk around best and worst map when it comes round to it. Um, again, conscious yeah. time. We've got about twenty minutes or so left now. Fresh, I know you had your kind of like quick fire questions you wanted to fire at Leon. So go away. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll do that at the end. I've. Um, right. I've you want to do the Q and A first? Or? Discord. I've, yeah, I'll, we'll do the Q and A first. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess this is this is just more questions that I've like picked up from people. Um, mm -hmm. so I'll start. I'll start with Leon. Um, okay. So somebody asked, "How do you balance entry fragging and being an IGL? Because obviously, a lot uh, of IGLs are usually supports or flexes. I mean, it's like it's a lot easier than I think people would think. Like, I think for the most part, like in the prep phase, you'll call what you need that everyone to do, or if you have like yeah. anything written down, you'll you'll follow the plan. Um, and as an entry fragger, I don't know if you see my stats, but personally, I die first quite a lot. So, <laughs> Just once a bit. you know the first minute of the round's done, he's like a Valkyrie on your on attack. <laughs> once in the first minute of the round's done, uh, you know I've got two minutes of the round to call whatever I need or whatever I need people to do um, in that in that round, like. Um, there's a lot of times in stage one where it's like Kazeko and Rips left alive and they make a play and you'll see it on stream but behind the scenes it's like me and Aces making the calls for the play you know yeah fair enough because <clears throat> that, that feeds into the aspect of um, it's been talked about before if like coaches or analysts or whatever could speak during during the game and just have a, a sixth, so a sixth uh, slot for a spectator point of view it would be quite interesting yeah. <clears throat> um yeah, moving on. Um I guess this one's for everyone actually. Um what would your World Cup lineup be for I presume England, Great Britain, however they're classifying it. Say again, sorry? What would the World Cup lineup be for uh, England? I think we all have like three, four names in our book straight away that would like instantly make it in, right? Yeah, I think it's get a mix in there. Of just one player. You'll do all the calls. <laughs> yeah, just just skills. Yeah, I mean, as your coach, mate, I'll do it. Sure. <laughs> I think I know the lineup. I have fine. personally. But... Are you, you going to say it? Or are you yeah. Well, it? obviously me. Uh, I can't not have me in it. Uh, Someone's got to be there citizen. to like throw it out, mate, and start into it at the very start of a round, run into every firefight and lose it. Exactly. Uh, citizen as well. You know, top one of the top uh, players right now in G two and UK. Uh, Doki Kendrew. You know, icons of the UK scene and Navi as well. Uh, and honestly, my fifth would be Nathan, 
or Pack Ball. I don't know. Mm. It's really hard to choose between the two. Yeah, both good players. It's really hard to choose between the two because they're both really good players. And, like, I feel like, you know, it's <laughs> you just have to, I don't know, like, pick it out of, like, a hat for one of them two. The, uh, the interesting thing about the the World Cup thing is we could, you know, obviously we, we hope you stay up, Leon, but if we've got <clears> two more <throat> UK teams in EU League, that's a lot of players that are in contention. More mm-hmm. than yep. what was obvious six months ago. True. You know, uh, the way Sloth's been playing in CL, would you want yeah, to leave Sloth good. out? Yeah, it's a, a lot's changing. Uh, ball. The time. Yeah. And we have mm. a B team, I mean... P team, yeah. <laughs> we'll get first and second place, right? <laughs> yeah, I reckon so. Uh, what would yours be, Des? Uh, the same four that he said at the very start. Um, I almost don't want to be that dickhead in a way and say this, but I almost kind of question at times that like, even though those th- those four of the four players that every single person I've spoken to raises, you know, it's like, right, Leon Citizen, Kenny and Doki make it in by default. There's no question on those four. And like what you just said then, like, is that because of the... The visibility those four players have because you see them every single week playing at the top level and therefore assume they're always the best or are there generally players in the second level in CL for example that actually given a chance in a tier one team would deliver better than some of those players would I don't know um, but that's one thought on it the other three around it like I think you us, us three spoke about this at some point as well where we said I mean I'm not a raised Pat Bull um, I think I said Nathan I really rate um Kayak is a player that I always kind of put forward in my mind and just think he could be decent as well. Is he proven enough to say that he could definitely be there? He is one of the most consistent players on Kavana in my mind. Like, look at the stats. Him and Gorgona on that team, both absolutely incredible. He, he is probably the best, like, UK player on that lineup. Mm, I, think he, I think I he's think brilliant. I think really good as well, but I'm, I mean, I'm not going to be that guy, but I think the other two are a bit... I think Kayak's yeah. more consistent. To be fair. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's going to get close. Oh, nice. I mean, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, but has got it out for Sloth. Really that's it now. He's, he's open for their doom. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I really, I really do Grizzle. rate. Um, I really rate Nathan. Like, he's a player that I'm surprised we haven't seen at a high level before. Um, we've all seen Pat Ball play this stage. We've all seen what he's brought to Secret as well. Stats don't look impressive, but the games when he's played well do really show what he can do. So it's a hard call for that fifth spot, in my opinion. Packball had that much of an impact that half of EU League banned Monty and Clash. <laughs> <laughs> and Nearly Goffin, every single game. Back. Yeah, he had that much impact true. in the first few <laughs> well, weeks. Like... Is, that, is that because he's like, it's like one of these only ops he can play, admittedly. Like... <laughs> I don't know. I think he's, <laughs> I think he's more Here we go, mate. You're talking straight to the coach now. He's ready to rip your throat out. Go on. Ah, that's all right. Uh, yeah, I had a bit of fun with it. No, we, we always found it really funny how teams would ban like those ops against us. Oh, yeah. And it all just stems because we identified a situation where G2 was like a bit wobbly against shields. So we were like, ah, good chance to win if we just abuse shields against them. Then everyone was like, oh, fuck, these guys bash shields. And then banned it every game. Like, <laughs> just the one of the funny teams, thing you know? was, was like in, in stage one, the amount you would uh, go on to me and Dez after games when you'd played against somebody that would bash a shield a matter. Oh, yeah. The amount that you, in particular, hated shields. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite ironic to see you bashing shields. But what do you oh, think? hell you yeah. Have a guy who can play shields. Like, that was one of the major things we wanted, was someone who could shot call, IGL, was flexible, could play all the hard breaches, could also play, like, something more flexible on maps like Coastline, for example, but then also could play shields. If we needed someone to play a shield, we didn't have a shield player, so... You know, it was like a key for that person to bring in. We didn't know any real direction in which the meta might move in. And yeah. uh, I mean, shields are just ridiculously strong, aren't they? Yep. Not yeah. anymore. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah, fuck them. Uh, um, <laughs> moving on, who would you like to play comp again with like most like previous teammates? Are there any previous teammates that you'd want to play again? I guess that's a Leon question. Oh, it's hard. Um, well, anyone, anyone on Seeker, really. Like, probably Meepy, Feral, or Stizzy in particular. I think, uh, like, when Feral first joined us um, last year, like, me and him as a duo was really good. Um, Meepy, I've played with for a long time. Uh, I know how he plays, he knows how I play. And we had a good synergy. And Stiz, because Stizzy was my droner, and you know, I died less when he droned me in. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, do you have any tips on resetting your mental state? I guess that's something that you've probably tried to or had to do recently. Um, I don't know. I feel like as a player, like 
even though like we've had a lot of losses recently, it doesn't really affect me anymore. I uh, like you know I went through a lot of shit on secret, um, so everything that kind of happens now is kind of numb to me, and I just you know I just don't care about it anymore. I just focus on the next play day. So just lose a lot, and then you'll never have to worry about a, a bad mentality. <laughs> Golden <laughs> advice. Uh, only yeah, way I got used to figure that, it out. To be honest, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the only way I figured out how to get over it. Really, yeah. Fair enough. Um, this this one's actually I don't I don't know if you'll want to answer this uh, too in detail because it's from Eagle Muse, you know the analyst mm -hmm. for BDS. Yep. Um, he wants to know about your support staff structure at Rogue. Um, so he said he's aware that who it is and somewhat what the role is, but he wants you to kind of go in in more depth around how uh, Arkuf and and Rousty kind of work in your setup. Yeah. Um, and especially the kind of strategic and mental touch uh, roles. Well. Arkov is more like the analyst, like, uh, you know, does all the stats, does helps us with, like, strats and all that. They're pretty much everything to do within Siege uh, is what Arkov does. And then Rousey is the person who helps us with everything outside of Siege, you know, whether it comes down to, like, mental issues or, you know, even, like, IRL issues that you have or, like, you know, trying to help us build ourselves as a, a stable, uh, like, focused player in-game uh, whilst playing in the moment. Uh, just to, I don't know how else to word it really tell you what you guys uh, didn't make his job hard in stage 2 then did you <laughs> nah, he was Fuck stressed me. he was Mate, stressed in stage no doubt two. Jesus Christ yeah I think everyone was but uh yeah that's pretty much how they worked and then they mm. worked together on a few things um mainly through like communication and teamwork because they see obviously different sides of it because Ralsey has been on a I think he's like a mental coach or a coach for like a a hockey team in Finland, I think it was, or something like that, or just a sports team in Finland. I can't remember which one. Um, so they work together to work on the communication side of everything in scrims. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I'll, I'll go for some some in the chat as well. I'm, I'm well over. I've got five ten minutes left. Um, a good what's, one the about worst, what's the worst comp map? Is, is that the one about? Yeah, yeah uh, that's the one. Honestly, uh, Angela. Angela. Yeah, it's Why? fucking stale. And what would you it's do to so fix it? It's so boring. Like, get like garage is <laughs> like so boring to play. Top floor, like they're all boring bomb sites. Like you do the same shit on every bomb site. You ever go yellow, you go admin, and it's the same way you take them. Yeah, and there's no other way you can really deviate or make new strats to stop certain pushes. Like it's all the same shit. Isn't that kind of good though for like the like uh, teams who are like coming into comp for the first time like having these maps yeah, that are more like, checklisty where they can kind of yeah, learn how to do the good stuff yeah constant club are good for those like I, I feel like club took the spot of the old oregon where like it doesn't matter what really what tier team you are like you can be good at clubhouse because it's very step by step yeah yeah, yeah i usually see a lot of clubhouse and consulate from like tier three tier two teams yeah and it's understandable what about you guys what's your what, what's the worst comp map for you <laughs> Well, if we're talking about my perspective of casting a map, uh, what do I hate when it comes up on screen? You hit Carlos, hmm. I know that. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, we'll go, yeah, that, that's go into that another day. That could be genuinely be another content, uh, another content piece one day, I'm sure. Uh, no, I'm just trying to think. Like, I don't particularly like Villa, I don't think, casting it. I don't have any particularly solid reason to why. I don't know why. There's just something I just don't like about the map. Whether or not, because it feels quite binary in terms of you push from the south, well... You push on the opposite end of the map, or you push where the site is, and it becomes quite pinchy. Um, oh yeah, like every other map in the game, like <laughs> to a de to a degree. But compare that to something like no, 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 seriously. Compare it to something like Coastline. Like Coastline is a very oh, execute heavy is map. Dog shit, though. Isn't Are you it? trying Come to on. say Coastline's better than Villa does? No, I'm not trying he to is. say it's better. You ask me what my preference is. Do you want to do this every week with us, and we just kick theirs out? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you ask me my preference, and I'm telling you my preference to cast. I don't like casting Villa. Casting. I like casting Coast. I don't think in terms of like the strength of the maps. I don't think they are necessarily the best or the weakest ones. I just think Villa's just a fucking boring map, to be honest with you. But Coast, if you want to see a team go for executes and really play an objective-based game, I think it's a pretty good map for that. Shut the fuck. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm dead serious. <laughs> coast, bro. I'm dead serious, coast, mate. You just, you just I don't know, know, you know, 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 you know, know how you IGL Coast, right? <laughs> Leon will vouch for this. You just go, is there anyone roaming on top floor? Uh, yeah, cool. If it got a bar bar on kitchen window, no, right, jump in there, then boys. No, <laughs> exactly. But well, this is the whole point, like, right? You're not like being like you're not playing like fucking hurdles or like a gauntlet to get to the site in the first place, like on theme park, like you said earlier. It's just played around the site, and I think that's a better thing. Even if 
it turns out you never fucking bother actually planting the diffuser down. It just forces activity around a bomb site, and that's fun, I think. It's different to what you get out of the maps. Best thing you can do on that map as a defender is pick rook and transform peak like, and that's the best thing. <laughs> yeah. I think, actually, yeah. less, I think you get less activity on coast side because you're stuck in kitchen to either behind kitchen bomb or stock. Like, <laughs> there's yeah, really no rules yeah. you can really play. The only the best way they've like buffed that map recently is given you the solid bomb chassis to sit behind. Yeah, literally. I think there is potential for that map though if they like add some new operators that do some new things. But ultimately, it's my least favorite map. That's my answer, by the way. I it's think one of my shit. I think the more I've played Coast, the more I hate it. <laughs> mm. Like the, the kind of correct way of viewing Coast, I think, is it's all about adaptability. If your team's really adaptable, Coastline's great. You don't need to do any prep work because it's Coastline. Like you just drone see what the other team are doing. Then you can just do whatever is the best play to make in that kind of moment, right? Problem stems from the fact that everyone kind of uh you know bans thatcher abuses mute mozzie you can't drone anything and then it just becomes really boring people sitting on windows and on the roof for the whole game ruins yeah that's it like <laughs> yeah. yeah ruins literally I, w I won't deny it, it's my least favorite map to play admittedly this is in fucking silver so take with that with a pinch yeah. of salt it is really fucking boring to play i get sick and tired of getting spawn peaks every two seconds on that map i can see it differently from carson though because like yeah, yeah this, this is what I mean, right? So don't take this as me saying that this is a great in, map or this is a shit map. It's more what I like casting is very different to what I think are good maps. Yeah, that's yeah. fair enough. Um, um, so, so the guy who asked the question, sorry to interrupt a little bit there, Jack. Oh, the guy who asked the question was like completely uh, obsessed with the idea of like theme park being really bad. But actually, I think theme park's a great map. Like, I actually have no problem with it. I mean, you fucking yeah, hated it last season. How, how like big it is to get, sorry, how long it takes to get to the building. That's it. Mm. Yeah, I think it's good for comp, but bad for ranked because of how much like team play you need. And I yeah. think it's like the opposite way of like Canal, for example. The one thing yeah. that my my big gripe with Theme Park is that it's got one, uh, it's got Armory Front Room, right, which is is fine as a site, and then it's got two identical sites. Like the sites are identical, yeah, first, but the way they play the out, you you end up playing the same attack and defense, pretty much two rounds in a row, three rounds in a row. If the attack wins one of them, um. So from that's the only bit that I don't like about it, but uh, yeah, I do like it as a map, generally. I want to see how it shapes up after these changes to the meta, right? Because in the moment, everyone plays theme park by just abusing as many shields as they can fit into a lineup, Yeah, basically. People got to remember that's how theme park was introduced. It was introduced into the shittest meta. Like, I think once things change up a bit uh, with like the changes they're bringing in next season, it might actually be like more fun to play and watch. In, I'd, in my I'd opinion, like it's the same as Border. Like, I think the theme park and border are like very similar maps. And that sounds very stupid. Like, from a, for, if you don't think of it in the way that I'm thinking of it, but like in border, it was all about like fast map control, clearing like one or two small rooms you needed, getting very direct yeah. control on the bomb sites, Bo getting the border bomb down. Border attacks always played out very similar in terms of take the, like, especially the downstairs site in terms of taking the top first. And yeah, yeah I, I see what you mean. The attacks mm. seem to play out the same no matter what objective you or what site you were attacking. Yeah, pretty much. I feel like the only map that hasn't really been mentioned in this whole discussion is Oregon. Like, I know it's been in the pool for a while now. We've, we saw it to fucking death in EU for a while. It's the best map, that's why. Best I was about, I was about game, to say, yeah. like, what are your guys' thoughts on it and why do you like it so much if it is your favourite maps? I mean, we saw it in EU League because best of ones and how shit the yeah. format is. Let's just be honest. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, every, it's a map that everyone liked, but wasn't necessarily everybody's favourite map. Um, I just think it's, it's very balanced. It's a very good map that allows... It allows you some kind of flexibility in the way you want to attack or defend it. Um, and yeah, a lot of teams can obviously like it. Mm. I think the meta is like, it's a, it's a lessened version of what you see currently. Like it's, it's like you can destroy things a lot easier on Oregon as well, because there's more floor play you can do and stuff. Yeah, for sure. I also think that the spots in which you like kind of want to AFK in on like especially the top floor site like if you want to play like a bit afk on the top floor site then you get punished for that by the right team like yeah. rogue for example we're always going below and like using nades clearing these spots like it's just like really i would say really common now because more teams are doing it bds and never like really good example of a team who's playing this way but like uh the fact that you can do that and it's not concrete floor just makes it much more like there's much more variety and because of that you saw you know uh like for example in the major you saw like empire play like with kitchen holes and all kinds of stuff there's all kinds of nice stuff you can do with that map there's some interesting stuff that you can do like i remember you guys doing like a ying smoke plant on that top floor no mm. i can't remember who the hell you was playing yeah bds uh, it was yeah BDS, it's beautiful it? yeah um and like that you know even if you talk about that top floor 
as a default, you've kind of got three default pushes you can do. You can do the west push from kitchen play below. You can do a master trophy type take. You can do a tower take, or you can do kind of variations of all three. And I think that's why that map plays out really well. Yeah. I also feel like it's uh sorry to uh, cut you off, but uh, no problem. Huh? Like I feel like you can't like um I might was saying earlier about you can't just sit like at the back behind a shield because uh, like you can get killed through the floor. It's also the same with just playing in the back of kids. Like you can't really do anything there. You have to actively be like denying shit. Nothing else? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, All right. One little gripe about Oregon, though. And that's Go on, then. That every single place you do want to sit, there is a window, there is a drone <laughs> hole, there is like some bullshit that you'll die from. I remember when we first got into the map, me and me and Lazo were like, Oh yeah, we could do this interesting thing. Oh, well, we can't there's a window there. Oh, we can do this, we can put this here. There's a drone hole there. Oh, well, we could do this. Oh, there's two drone holes in the window there. Oh, right, like a basement. If you've seen basement, there's like a hundred and fifty fucking drone holes down there. I swear <laughs> to God. It was like they were like Oh, they might play a mirror down here, boys. Let's just make sure there's a hundred drone holes for Twitch drones. Like, and the amount of times that, like, when I play, I die to like just some some shit angle in a drone hole somewhere that I just didn't know was there. It's unbelievable. Some guy the other day outside of white, like outside of white stairs, you know, the like freezer stairs. You have the um, there's like a drone hole there, and you can get like a one pixel angle on the stairs. I died to that the other day. There's just so many. Like, actually, Leon, you're an expert on dying to drone holes. Oh, that was bullshit. That... Yeah, that, you're talking about Cato, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm, that and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going near drone holes ever again. Did you, did just... you ever hear the comms from that? Because Pac was like, I did. Pac was like, sent me. Leon Gids will be peeking this drone hole, baby. And he just puts a drone in there and Leon <laughs> peeks it and he kills it. Like, <laughs> yeah, like. Uh, Pac was so bad for that. Our, uh, the first time that we, when we got secretly back for Chaos, we, uh, you know, we, I think we screamed consulate. Um, and Pac Bull, there's the little drone hole outside the main door that looks down to Harry Potter. And oh, secretly was playing there as the maestro or some shit, right? <laughs> and we're playing downstairs. 30 seconds into the round, secretly was like, I'm dead, boys. Where from? Oh, Pac Bull's killed me from the drone hole. <laughs> yeah. Aces knows about that one too. He left that. Yeah, oh, that I remember one time that. we screamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have done. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. If there's a drone hole, Patwell's going to somehow abuse it. <laughs> yeah. He does like drone holes, to be fair to him. That's the first time and the only time I'll ever die to that drone hole. <laughs> Mate, it's a, it's a learning experience, is what we'll call it, all right? Yeah. But, uh, we've, we've, got, we've got Anima Milk giving it large features in the chat, so we'll move on to the quick questions that you might have for us and Fresh, and we'll start to look to wrap things up. What you got for us? Uh, yeah, so this is, this is specifically kind of just for Leon. Um, it's quick fire, fest. First thing that comes into your head, just spit it out, basically. Um, Dangerous. So, yeah. If you could bring one old uh, map back into the comp map pool, which one would it be? Uh, none of them. I hate them all. all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, which which one player that's outside of EU League at the minute should be in EU League and is good enough to be in EU League? Ooh. Is that including Challenger League or just EU League? In including Challenger League. Uh, I don't know, Alfie. Alfie. If, you were, if we were holding, uh, <laughs> if we were holding a Rainbow Six charity boxing match, who would your opponent be, and why? My opponent, personally. Your oh, opponent. God. Yeah. Uh, say demo. Obviously, you and Kenji go at it. To be honest. Yeah, guy. Yeah, Kenny. Yeah, that'd be a good laugh. You're going for Kenny. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, on your team, who's got the best aim? Azeka. Who's going to win the EU finals? Who's in it again? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's not worried about what's going on at the top, BDS, he's worried about what's going on down the bottom. BDS, uh, Navi... BDS, Navi, G2, and VP. Uh, BDS. What's your favourite LAN that you've ever attended? My favourite LAN would be... Paris. If you'd have said OGA, then it'd have been like, because you got there, you got first rounds on the first day and then fucked around for the next two days with demo and shatters. OGA was great, yeah. It was a good <laughs> laugh. Um, who's the best operator on Rainbow Six or in Rainbow Six? Smoke. Who's the worst? Uh, current Tachenko. Um, and the final one, if a player wanted to go professional, so uh, tier three, tier four player, what's the one, like the one biggest factor that would, that would determine if they're going to go professional? In your uh, their attitude and mentality towards their teammates. Perfect. Thank you very much. That's uh, the the kind of quick fire questions done. So, I guess any any closing thoughts from anybody? 
Mm, from you especially, Leon. Yeah, you're the guest. We'll be back again. Maybe you will be at some point. But anything you want to kind of say or address now while you've got the uh, room to do so? Uh, just thank you to all like the fans and stuff here that stick with us after uh, nine incredible losses. Um, I'm pretty sure and I'm confident we'll bring it back in relegations. Awesome, fair did, play. Did you know you was kind of a little bit fucked when you lost to Chaos? Yeah, that well, was, was that when you turning knew? point. Not, not going to lie, mate. Chaos is kind of the like... The meter stick by which to measure every other team by, right? If you lose to Chaos, you've got serious fucking problems exactly. in EUL. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Nothing no, else to say on it. The best player in the world. <laughs> Mate, he actually is. He has the best rating. Yeah. You look on CGG stats, he's got the best rating for the whole stage. Yeah, proves how that bullshit group? stats yeah. are, don't yeah. it? <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> Yeah. I Prino is just a god, it's the best way to look at it. But thank you very much, Leon. I re really appreciate you jumping on for the first episode with us as well. Uh, obviously, good luck for relegations. We'll all be watching, no doubt. I'll probably be casting it at some point as well. So excited to see how that one plays out. Yeah, it's been fun talking to you all and, uh, you know, having a laugh. Absolutely, yes, mate. Awesome. Mm. Well, we'll be back again at some point. I think we're back in a couple of weeks with our next episode. It'll probably just be us three on for that one. We'll talk around some other subjects around Siege, maybe around Secret, maybe around Chaos, their journey through so far. But keep your eyes on Twitter. Back again soon. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys, and we will catch you all soon.